All right, if you are watching this, please grab a King James Bible and turn to the book of John, chapter 3. Today we're going to continue in our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study of the Gospel of John. And uh, we're going to go through the first 13 verses of chapter 3 today. So let's get right into it. Let's start off in uh, the first verse, first and second verse, right off the bat. Uh, it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So in verses 1 and 2, Nicodemus, a ruler over the, over the Jews, who was a Pharisee or religious leader, came secretly at nighttime to speak with Jesus because he undoubtedly didn't want the other Pharisees to know for fear of persecution by them. He admits that he knows Jesus is from God. Okay, so from there, let's go right into verse 3 and read through verse 8 before I give my uh, commentary on it. So right into verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. All right, so verses 3 through 8, we see the doctrine of the new birth. This is where people get it when they say, you have to be born again in order to be saved. And that concept of being born again carries over into the epistles of Paul, as we're going to look at. And it has a lot to do with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which makes you a new creature. There's a new creature inside of you. Um, and it also is, like I said, it's compared here to a new birth. And it also compares you to the body of Christ, as well as the betrothed uh, bride of Christ. All things that point out that when you get saved, you cannot lose your salvation. Uh, so, we see the doctrine of the new birth and how it is needed to see the kingdom of God. Uh, as it says in verses 3 and 5, it says in 3, uh, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 5, it says, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that is just another way of saying a man who was born of the flesh who gets saved is the only way you'll see the kingdom of God, okay? And in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, it shows us that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom that dwells within the believer and is different than the kingdom of heaven, which is a physical kingdom when Jesus returns to earth. Now, during that millennial reign of Christ, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, they come together, but the Bible makes it very clear, the King James Bible does, modern Bibles distort this, and they intermix the two, but the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, and in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, let's take a look at that real quick, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, so you can't see it. Just like when he was talking about the wind, how you cannot see it. It's the same thing with the kingdom of God. You cannot see it. In verse 21, he says, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So a saved believer in Christ in the gospel today gets born again. They get begotten. And they have the kingdom of God in them because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So it's a very important thing to know that a lot of people seem to overlook. A lot of people today say, you're not born again when you get saved. And that is not what Paul teaches. Paul teaches us 
who was the apostle to the Gentiles during this age of grace. And by the way, Gentiles and Jews all get saved the exact same way in this dispensation by believing in the gospel. <clears throat> so it's very clear that we get born again when we are saved, when we have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, Nicodemus shows he has no idea what Jesus means by being born again. And Jesus tells him in verse 5 that he must be born of the water, which in verse 6 points out that he is referring to flesh. Because when a woman gives birth, her water breaks, and then a child is born in the flesh, and that a man must be born of the Spirit. Now, some people will say that that means he has to be water baptized. Well, either way, if this is talking about water baptism and not a flesh, like it seems to point out in verse 6, then it still is not for our dispensation. Because you see, during the book of Acts, that there is a transition that takes place where they were still going in the early book of Acts to Jews only and water, bapti water baptizing them for remission of sins like John was. And there was a transition that took place to believing alone by the end of the book of Acts under Paul's ministry that Jesus gave him. So there was no longer a necessity for water baptism because Jesus was not saving the Jews alone anymore. He was saving Jews and Gentiles, and it became salvation through faith alone. And you get baptized by the Holy Spirit by believing. So either way, whatever water means here in verse uh, 5 of John 3, uh, you still don't get saved by being water baptized today. But in verse 6, it does point out, it says, born of the flesh is flesh. So it's pretty obvious that when he's saying you're born of water and of spirit, means you're born in the flesh as a man, or of mankind, rather. And then you're born of the Spirit by believing in the gospel, which is revealed to Paul. The gospel is different in the book of John, you know, in, in 3.16. Uh, we're not going to even go over that today, but he says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Uh, we see that people had to believe, I think it's right here in verse yeah, 18, they had to believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. They had to believe that Jesus is who he said he is, that he is the Messiah. Uh, so now, after his death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that he died for our sins. The Son of God, God himself, manifested in the flesh, died for our sins by shedding his blood on the cross. And he was buried and rose again the third day. That's how you get saved, if you believe that. So again, there still was not a dispensation change yet. He was still talking to primarily the Jews in the Gospels of, Mark, or of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right, so let's continue here. <clears throat> um, in the dispensation we are in today, we get born again when we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1. So let's go to Ephesians 1. And we're going to read verses 12 through 14. It says that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And uh, it's going to say, it's talking about the gospel here. In verse 13, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So what it's saying here is when you believe the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. When you believe that, you'll be sealed by that Holy Spirit, meaning you can never lose your salvation, and you will possess that until the rapture. That's what it means when it says the redemption of the purchased possession. You're going to have that gift until the rapture happens, okay? So, and the Lord will forever be with you. <clears throat> now, again, it says, once you believed in the gospel of your salvation, what is the gospel of your salvation? Again, it's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. This is how you get born again, how you get sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are saved eternally. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. So this is where you got to you stand on this gospel. This is what you put your faith in. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. And that was by shedding his blood on the cross, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So in Ephesians 12, or Ephesians 1, verse uh, 13, it says, After you heard the gospel of your salvation, that is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, how you get sealed by that Holy Spirit. Now, in 1 Corinthians 4, Paul points out that that's how we are begotten. That's how we are born again. So when we get saved, we also get born again. So 1 Corinthians 4, verse 15, it says, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Begotten means you've been born. So this is a new birth. You are born again through the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. It's very easy to understand. Okay, let's go back to the gospel of John. And let's continue here in verse 9. Let's read 9 through 12. It says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So Nicodemus, he shows a little bit of his ignorance of the subject, but with a willingness to learn, and, ju and Jesus lightly rebukes him, for not knowing such things when he is a supposed master of Israel. Okay? So in uh, verse 13, it says, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. You know, he said he's in heaven because, as he's already previously stated, he is God. He and the Father are one. So yes, he's on earth in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Bible says. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in one. However, the Father is still also in heaven. So right here is pointing it out. You know, the Godhead, or the Trinity as we also call it, is, is a, kind of a mystery to us. God is three persons in one. He's one God in three persons. It's a very interesting thing to see, and we see that all over the Bible. Um... So Jesus is clearly telling him that he is the Lord when he says this, because he's the only one to ascend or des descend, which means to go up to heaven on one's own accord, on one's own power. No man can do that. Only God can will that for somebody, and he's the only one that can do it on his own power. So he ascended. And for example, we're going to see Jesus in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord ascending. And we're going to see that this is clearly talking about Jesus. So what I want to go to is the book of Judges. And we're going to look at Manoah, who is the father of Samson, and his encounter, his and his wife's encounter with the angel of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ pre-incarnate. Okay? So, Judges 13, let's read verses 17 through 22. It says, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? See, his name was not revealed until it was revealed to Mary, about his name being Jesus, Jehovah saves. So up until then, it was a secret, okay? So, again, we got to understand the Trinity of God. When he reveals his name as Jehovah, as the Father, there's still not the revealing of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see here in his pre-incarnate form, he is still denying people to know what his name is, okay? He's saying it's a secret. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, 
that the angel of the Lord ascended. See, he ascended, just like in verse 13 of John chapter 3, in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. So they clearly saw the pre-incarnate form of Jesus Christ. And he ascended on his own, just like in John uh, chapter 3. Verse 13, he states very clearly that uh, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So we see that the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. And that's not the only title he takes in the Old Testament. We have to see quite often uh, there's different pre-incarnate names for the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, including the captain of the Lord's host when he spoke with Joshua when they were first coming into the promised land. That's just one more example. Uh, so we're going to finish up here. We see that the gospel of salvation in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 is how we get begotten or born again, as Jesus was telling Nicodemus. In this dispensation, we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross and shed all of his blood for our atonement, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day. If we believe that, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are born again. It's a new spiritual birth that we can never lose. We are forever children of God. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this, give it a like and give it a share. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.